In 1965, a nuclear reactor operated flawlessly for over 13,000 hours. It couldn't melt down, produced minimal waste, and solved nearly every problem we associate with nuclear power today. Then it was shut down, dismantled, and largely forgotten. This is forgotten history, not science fiction. A technology that could have transformed our energy landscape disappeared into obscurity. While we pursued other paths, this revolutionary design waited in the shadows. Now, decades later, countries like China and Denmark are racing to resurrect this lost potential, recognizing what we once overlooked. The path not taken decades ago might hold the key to our energy future. The question is, can we learn from our past choices? When most people think of nuclear energy, three disasters usually come to mind. Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. These accidents happened on three different continents over three different decades, yet they all delivered the same message. Conventional nuclear power can go badly wrong. The core problem comes down to design. Most nuclear plants use solid uranium fuel rods that need constant cooling. Similar to a car engine that requires continuous circulation of coolant to prevent catastrophic overheating. If the cooling system fails, whether from human error, mechanical fault, or a natural disaster, things can spiral fast. At Fukushima, that failure caused hydrogen gas to build up and explode. If temperatures keep rising, the fuel melts. That's how radiation can escape into the environment. The design flaws extend beyond meltdown risks. The waste from uranium reactors stays radioactive for thousands of years we still don't have a permanent solution for storing it. Most of it is kept in temporary containers at the plants themselves, creating an environmental liability that spans generations. The weapons issue presents another serious concern. The same uranium used in power plants can be enriched to make bombs, and reactors also produce plutonium, the material used in nuclear warheads. This dual-use nature has complicated global cooperation on nuclear energy and raised legitimate security concerns throughout its history. Cost factors heavily into the equation too. Nuclear plants require tremendous infrastructure, thick concrete domes, redundant emergency backup systems, and massive cooling towers. These essential safety measures drive up expenses significantly. In the West, new reactors often run billions over budget and take more than a decade to build, making them increasingly difficult to finance in competitive energy markets. Yet, despite these daunting challenges, nuclear power remains one of the most reliable sources of clean energy. A single plant can power three quarters of a million homes without producing carbon emissions. And unlike solar or wind, it works day and night regardless of weather conditions, providing the consistent baseload power that modern grids demand. This creates the nuclear paradox. The technology offers steady, large-scale power without the air pollution of fossil fuels, but its risks, high costs, and troubled history keep holding it back. Some countries, like Germany, have shut down their plants entirely. Others, like France, still depend on nuclear for over 70% of their electricity. The fundamental issue isn't nuclear fission itself, it's the reactor designs we chose decades ago. Back in the 1950s and 60s, the priority wasn't safety, it was producing plutonium for weapons. That early decision shaped the technology we still use today, locking us into an inherently problematic approach. What if we had chosen a different path? But while the world doubled down on uranium and weapons-grade fuel, one scientist was quietly building something different, something that solved the very problems we're still struggling with today. In the 1950s, deep inside Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee, physicist Alvin Weinberg was working on a new kind of nuclear reactor. While most scientists were focused on uranium and weapons-grade fuel, Weinberg wanted something safer, something better for power, not bombs. Our job? Weinberg once said, is to make nuclear energy so safe and economical that people will demand it. His team turns to thorium, a more common element than uranium. The real breakthrough was how they used this fuel. 
Instead of hacking solid rods into a reactor, they dissolved thorium in molten salt, creating a liquid fuel. This was called a molten salt reactor, and it worked in a completely different way from the reactors we know today. This wasn't merely theoretical. From 1965 to 1969, Oak Ridge ran a working prototype. Inside the humming facility, scientists watched as their creation operated safely for over 13,000 hours. No major issues, no meltdown risks. The data they gathered painted a clear picture of what nuclear energy could have become. The molten salt reactor had a revolutionary advantage. It couldn't melt down. The fuel was already molten. If something went wrong, the liquid simply drained into a safe holding tank, like a bathtub with an automatic drain. No need for backup power, no complex emergency system, safety was built into its very design. Thorium brought additional benefits to the table. It didn't produce much plutonium, making weaponization difficult. It created less long-term waste, radioactive for hundreds of years rather than thousands. And it was abundant in nature. Thorium is three to four times more common than uranium. And unlike uranium, most of the thorium on Earth can be used as fuel, meaning we already have enough accessible thorium to power the planet for centuries. With all these advantages, why did this technology fade into obscurity? The answer lies in Cold War priorities. While Weinberg's team saw energy production as the goal, governments were evaluating reactors through a different lens. How could they make bomb material? The molten salt design, despite its safety and efficiency, failed this military checklist. In 1973, the program was shut down. Weinberg, who had led the lab, was dismissed. His reactor had worked flawlessly, but it contradicted military objectives. The technology that could have revolutionized energy production was shelved. For decades, this safer approach remained forgotten. While uranium reactors became the standard, thorium and molten salt knowledge gathered dust, preserved only in Cold War archives and the memories of a dwindling number of engineers. But innovation this promising couldn't stay dormant forever. Although sidelined during the Cold War, the seeds planted at Oak Ridge have begun to sprout in unexpected places. Today, thorium is experiencing a renaissance, not in American labs, but in cutting-edge facilities in China, Denmark, and beyond. Countries looking beyond weaponry to our energy future. In the middle of China's Gobi Desert, engineers have done what the Oak Ridge scientists only dreamed of. They've built a working molten salt reactor, powered by thorium, and it can run without shutting down for refueling. This project isn't small. It's backed by the Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics and is part of China's long-term strategy to lead in clean energy. The reactor, called TMSR-LF1, first went online in 2021. Amid the stark, windswept expanse of the Gobi, this technological marvel generates just 2 megawatts. But the real breakthrough isn't the size, it's how it works. Unlike traditional reactors that need to stop for maintenance or refueling, this one keeps running. Think of it like transitioning from a car that needs to pull over for gas to one that refuels while continuing down the highway. It also removes waste as it goes, something solid fuel reactors can't do. That means fewer shutdowns, more stability, and a cleaner fuel cycle. Now China is scaling up. They're planning a 10 megawatt version near the same site, set to launch by 2025. By 2029, they expected to produce both electricity and hydrogen, pushing China closer to its 2060 carbon neutrality goals. Even bigger designs are on the table, 100 megawatt reactors that could be deployed across Asia and the Global South as part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Meanwhile, in Denmark, a small startup called Copenhagen Atomics is taking thorium in a very different direction. Their idea? Make reactors so compact they can fit inside a shipping container and mass produce them like industrial machines. Imagine a nuclear power plant with the footprint of a standard shipping container deployable almost anywhere with minimal infrastructure. Their prototype, called the Waste Burner, runs on thorium and is designed to burn existing nuclear waste, turning one of nuclear's biggest problems into fuel. 
That could cut the lifespan of radioactive waste from 100,000 years to just 300. They plan to launch their first commercial reactor by 2028. Rather than pursuing massive facilities, Copenhagen Atomics focuses on modularity and accessibility. They're building a new kind of business model. Instead of selling the machines, they'll offer nuclear as a service. Customers, factories, chemical plants or utilities can buy the heat or electricity without owning or operating the reactor themselves. Deals are already forming in Indonesia and Scandinavia, where the focus is on clean industrial power like green ammonia production. Where China pursues scale and centralized power, Copenhagen Atomics seeks distributed adaptable solutions to contrasting approaches to the same energy revolution. But thorium's biggest reserves are not in the West. With the largest thorium reserves in the world but limited uranium, India has good reason to back this technology. Their plan? Use thorium to generate 30% of the country's electricity by 2050. It's a long-term vision, but one that matches their resources, their needs, and their growing role in global energy. What we're seeing with thorium reactors isn't just a comeback. It could be a turning point. These new designs solve nuclear power's biggest challenges, meltdowns, waste, and weapons in revolutionary ways. From China's desert labs to Denmark's factories, thorium reactors are becoming reality. They operate without traditional infrastructure, create minimal waste, and remain separate from weapons programs. The pivotal question is, are we ready to embrace the power of a safer, advanced nuclear future? The technology exists, safety is inherent, clean, reliable energy awaits us. Could thorium become nuclear's true future? Share your thoughts below. We read every comment. If this story resonated, like and subscribe for more.